In 87, May's End, the charts did gleam. One hit wonders sparked their fleeting green. But the hoodoo gurus with their rock and sound and pretenders and Bon Jovi, both world renowned, made a week of music history, so it seemed. Attention, attention, the months are getting cooler and the charts are getting hotter as we assess the top 10 for the week ending May 31, 1987. Our journey begins with the now THE pretenders, they used to just be pretenders, sans definitive article, and the very nice hymn to her. The B-side is really cool, a version of Jimi Hendrix's Room Full of Mirrors. I won tickets in a radio contest to see them at Festival Hall earlier that May. My future wife accompanied me and fell asleep about three minutes in, snoozing soundly through the whole gig, which ended with a rave up on Room Full of Mirrors. Nine is Midnight Blue by Lou Graham on sabbatical from Foreigner, which spent 16 weeks faffing about the charts, spending three anemic weeks in the ten, topping out at eight. Indistinguishable from Foreigner's bland power band Pabulum, it served to make Graham the first of this week's many one-hit wonders. And here's another one-hit wonder at number eight with Club Nouveau and their sturdy version of Bill Withers' Lean On Me. Not especially memorable, it made a fair showing in the ten, five weeks for a top of five, but it did much, much better in its home market of the USA. Number seven takes us from one-hit wonders to someone who has had countless hits. Madonna with La Isla Bonita, and I say this at the risk of invoking the wrath of my sister, but I have to say this is one of the very few singles of hers from 1983 to 1991 that I don't care for. I find the True Blue album, Papa Don't Preach Notwithstanding, a bit of a letdown. It's the poorest performer of the five entries we've seen thus far from her, performing a little worse than her previous True Blue. Eh, doesn't matter much. All would be forgiven shortly with like a prayer. Six is an old friend. Europe's Swedish apocalyptic metal of the final countdown. The sole survivor from our March 22nd countdown, Europe never again bothered the top 20. The follow-up Rock the Night stalled at 22, thus dodging the one-hit wonder label. On their previous entry in this series, I seem to recall, I took these guys and their hirsute buffoonery down in no uncertain terms. It's nice to see that I've matured a little. Speaking of hairy, it's the unreasonably handsome John Bon Jovi and his eponymous band, the anthemic Living on a Prayer, until recently with relentless repetition used in an ad campaign to sell french fries, bad coffee and various indigestible comestibles from McDonald's. This has the unmistakable late 80s whiff of Desmond Child about it and seems to have some half iconic, half ironic cachet to it. And if you love singing along to it as it plays waiting to see the band you pay to see, God love you. You bought your ticket and you can do what you like. It's time for the segment that the kids think is the most from coast to coast. Hello and goodbye. Where we check out what's new and fresh and what's like later for the garbage this week. On the new side, him to her debuts up from 12 last week to 10, bound for 7 with a month in the top 10. The big up and comer is Lean On Me, bounding in from 15 to 8, but it was all huff and puff and it petered out after 5 weeks, highlighted by a couple of weeks at number 5. Expunged from the 10 this week, the ever tedious U2 with With You or Without You, clearly we have chosen to be without you at this time, with number 9 being the best they returned. Also departing is former number 3, Male Stripper by Man to Man Meets Man Parish. Uh, something tells me the less I know about this record the better off I'll be. The next number 1 is at number 13, having made a big debut. You'll have to wait a little, but when it gets there, 5 weeks ascendancy shall be its reward. Looking at the trade-up, where we find records in the top 40 that never made the top 10 but probably deserve to, the first one we find is an excellent record by one of the great English soul queens, a walker in the path of Dusty Springfield, Alison Moyet, and weak in the presence of beauty. It certainly deserved better than the meagre number 32 it peaked out at. The second disc is the reason we have this segment. It's the title track of maybe the best album of the 80s, Sign of the Times by Prince. I can see how it's not a really commercial record, but gee, it's one of the strongest singles of the year, and it only made 29. That seems like a crime. Returning to our traditional position at this point in proceedings, which is four, it's Starship, with their tenacious chart hogger, Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now, 
which is up from 10 to 4 this week and will next week commence a record smashing run of six consecutive weeks at number three, shattering the previous record of five weeks held by six other records. Most notably, Love Will Keep Us Together by The Captain and Tennille and Love Is A Battlefield by Pat Benatar. A record spending as many as six weeks in a position which was not number one or number two, be they consecutive or otherwise, is quite rare. The only other ones we've seen so far, having as many as five, are Moni Moni by Billy Idol, which spends five straight weeks at number 10, Yesterday's Hero by John Paul Young, which spends six non-consecutive weeks at number nine, You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet by BTO, which spends six non-consecutive at six, and You Could Be Mine by Guns N' Roses, which had three goes at making number four, then Doctor and the TARDIS by the Time Lords, which did spend six weeks at number three, punctuated, however, by a week at number two. Nothing's gonna stop us now. I've got no higher than three, but it lingered in the top 10 for over three months. Currently, it's back in the public consciousness as it's being used to flog Subaru Outbacks to the great Australian public. Number three is the only local act on the top 10 this week, the mighty hoodoo gurus with their biggest hit, What's My Scene? criminally underappreciated in Australia. They have been consistently good record makers for over 40 years and always a top, top draw live act. I'm not sure how they translate overseas, but if you see these guys on any stage, especially in the big open air beer barns we have up here in Queensland, you are guaranteed a good time. What's My Scene is songwriter Dave Faulkner's favorite guru song. It got no higher than three for nine weeks in the top 10 and 16 weeks all up on the chart. Another ad song, it's forever embedded in the public consciousness as it was used as What's Your Team in ads for the National Rugby League from 2002 to 2004. Unfortunately, years when my team, Souths, were a bit crap. Number two is the former five-week number one, Boom Boom, by Paul Lukakis, that I have no memory of whatsoever. Lukakis was, you guessed it, a male model who was discovered, you guessed it, in a disco in Italy, which you may or may not have guessed, and who had, you guessed it, no more hits. My only memory of it was at the time I worked with a very proper Greek lady whose surname was Lukakis, and she took great pains to make it known that this fellow was no relation to her whatsoever. Five weeks at number one though, it's pretty impressive. Here are some indisputable facts. Australia is wider than the moon. There are only four words in English that end in D-O-U-S, and modern Doctor Who is rubbish. Here are some facts of a less substantial nature. It's Val's Fantastic World of Fact. The biggest riser this week is Ship of Fools by Will Party, up 18 places to 18. I'd forgotten this song and had to listen to it again. It takes a while to get going, but when it does, it's pleasant enough. It had a lot of words. The big fall of this week is Aretha Franklin and George Michael's I Knew You Were Waiting For Me. A long way from its heady days at number one, down 12 spots to 28. I wonder if when Aretha went to heaven in 2018, George was waiting there for her at the pearly gates as Aretha knew he would be. Is that too more because she sent a medal? <sighs> Don't worry, somebody dies a terrible death later on, so that'll even things up, I guess. Biggest debutante this week is the unstoppable Whitney Houston with I Want to Dance with Somebody in at 13 and amazingly not number one next week. But it would be. Said it before and I'll say it again, one of the most depressingly unfulfilled talents I've ever come across. Poor old Whitney. And the longest stayer on the charts this week was legendary Aussie band The Angels with We Gotta Get Out of This Place for the last of their 17 weeks before indeed getting out of this place. Number one in the home of the brave was Club Nouveau with Lean On Me, the first of its two weeks. And in the home of the fat rascal and the singing hippie, it was Madonna with La Isla Bonita, which either shows how little I know or how little the British public knew. Although maybe the idea of living on a pleasant sunny island was more appealing to the inhabitants of dismal Britain than it was to me in luminous Australia. This time last year, we had the pleasure of hosting at number one, Cliff Richard and the Young Ones with their comedy version of Living Doll. When I first saw the Young Ones, it was on in the late, late slot on the ABC, like 11.30 at night, and I laughed so hard I fell out of bed. My grandfather, who was in his 80s at the time, loved it. It was his favorite show. Next year, it'll be that Bond's a little Aussie, Sheila. Melbourne's own Kylie Minogue with I Should Be So Lucky, 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 Lucky. I love Kylie. She's great. And the number one album in town this week is the mighty Whispering Jack from that Bonza Aussie bloke, Melbourne's own The Invincible John Farnham. Farnham was named Australian of the Year for 1987, which caused a bit of a kerfuffle because no one actually asked the English-born Farnham if he was actually an Australian citizen at the time, which actually he wasn't. So a hasty naturalisation ceremony was agreed both because Farns wanted it and without it, well, it all would have been a bit of a shambles, wouldn't it? 
Anyway, anyway, back at the top for another section of the 25 week run it had there. The first Australian album to sell a million copies in Australia. For a long time, the best selling album ever in Australia. It's still the second best selling album. It would not be until July that it saw its final week at number one. There's been a lot of one hit wonders this week on our charts, so to celebrate, let's look at the 12 biggest wonderful one time hits we've had in my little town. Now, I've left out collaborations like USA for Africa and Stars for 45, and I've just concentrated on individual artists. 12. La Belle Epoque from France with their 1978 remake of Los Bravos' 1966 hit Black is Black. 11. Edward Bear, actually a band with the dopey last song from 1973. Self-fulfilling prophecy there, kids. 10. Terry Jacks with Season in the Sun from 1974. Both he and his career died in this song. Dave Dobbin, or nowadays Sir David Dobbin, with Slice of Heaven from 1987. 1973's See My Baby Jive for Wizard was a glam rock high watermark. Spirit in the Sky by Norman Greenbaum, which still rocks my soul like it did in 1970. 1976 was a good year for One Hit Wonder, with David Dundas's jeans on, a big one. 5. It's that Paul Lakakis fellow with Boom Boom from about 3 minutes ago. 4. Lady Bump by Penny McLean, aka Gertrude Veschinger from Klagenfurt in Austria from 1976. 3. I would have bet cash money, Heartbeat, It's a Love Beat by the DeFranco family would have been number 1, but nope. Number two, I can never understand how the Hucklebuck by Brendan Bowyer could have been such a big hit. The numbers just aren't there to support it. The number one that one hit wonder is R&J Stone with We Do It from 1976. Not a bad record. There was never going to be another hit though as R retired shortly after to write and produce wife J. Joanna's career. But she sadly died of a brain tumour in 1979. And she grew some death for you this week anyway. On that sombre note, we welcome the monkey whose mind is always on the first line, but whose funky drumming is always on the second line. It is Monty the Safety Monkey. Number one this week is our ninth biggest one-hit wonder, Dave Dobbin, with a little help from reggae band Herbs with A Slice of Heaven from an animated film based on a newspaper cartoon. How late of our times is that? Anyway, it's a sweet little earworm that spent a month on top and next week heroically managed to hold off the rampaging Whitney Houston to complete its four weeks. Now, usually I'm pretty fast and loose with New Zealand acts, lumping them in with locals because they were based here and they record here, but not Dave Dobbin. Dave is very, very, very New Zealand. Anyway, that's the way the cow ate the cabbage for this pretty nifty week in 1987. Thanks for stopping by. Should the good Lord be a willin' and the creeks don't rise, I will be with you again for more merrymaking and such in a new edition next week-ish. <laughs>